That's what it takes is faith. Look at that. We hear that word used very often. But what is it? What is faith? How do we get it? And why do we need it? Faith defined. Faith defined. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 defines faith. It says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So true Bible faith is more than just believing in something, right? It's more, it's so much more. That's what the, the world's definition of faith is, just believing in something. But that's not Bible faith. It says it's the substance of things hoped for. It makes the things that you hope for <coughs> tangible. It gives you evidence of things that you haven't even seen yet. That's faith. That's true Bible faith. Jesus put it this way. He said in Mark eleven twenty two, 22. says, Jesus, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Now the Greek translation, the closer translation of what he really said was, have the faith of God. Not just faith in God, but have the faith of God is what he really said. A closer translation. Some modern translators have said it this way. Have the God kind of faith. So what is the God kind of faith? What kind of faith does God have? Because that's the kind He gives us. Mark 11, 23 says this. The God kind of faith. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So Jesus defined the God kind of faith as a person believes in his heart. Then the person says with his mouth what he believed in his heart and it comes to pass. That's God kind of faith right there. Believe it in your heart, say it with your mouth, and watch it be manifest. That's God kind of faith. That's the kind of faith that created the universe. Right? God believed it. It says, the word says God reasoned with himself. And then God spoke it. He said, let it be. And what happened? It was. He believed it. He spoke it. It was manifest. That's the God kind of faith. That's the kind of faith God desires for you to have. That you can believe it. Then you can speak it. Then you can watch it come to pass. That's the God kind of faith. Faith dealt. Faith dealt. Romans 11.3 For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a what? Measure, Measure of faith. Dealt to each what? One. Are you in each one? Are you in each one? Yes. If I was to count the people here, would you be counting? Yes. So you're in each one. And so it says, he dealt each one a what? Measure a measure of faith. Paul was talking to Christians right here. Many Christians pray for faith. Right? Here's a shocker. Praying for faith is wasting your time. Does that shock you? Praying for faith is a waste of time. Why? Because God has already given you a measure of faith. Did he not? Is that not what the Word says? You as a believer don't have to pray for faith. You don't have to fast for it. You don't have to even be a better person for it. Why? Because the truth is, you already have it. If you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, if you're a born-again believer, you've already been given a measure of faith. You with me? Ephesians 2.8 says this, For by grace you have been saved through what? Faith. Faith. And not of yourself. It is a what? Gift. gift of God. So faith is a gift. Faith is a gift. I hear people say this all the time, or often. I just don't have any faith. I just don't have any faith. You know that what makes, that makes me want to say? That you're not saved. 
you're not a Christian. You're not born again. Because if you are, then God has already given you a measure of faith according to the Word. So the only way you can not have any faith at all is to not be a Christian. Because once you make that decision, God assigns you. He gives you a measure of faith. It's just part of what happens. It's part of the transformation that takes place. You've been given a measure of faith. Most people that say this, they just don't realize that they have faith because they've never used the faith that they've been given. Therefore, they don't realize that they have it. And by confessing the lack of faith, what they're actually doing is taking sides against God. They're taking sides against the Word. Because God and His Word are one, are they not? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. God and His Word are one. So if the Word says you've been given a measure of faith, and you say I don't have any faith, you're taking, your, you're taking stands against God. Wow. That's a sobering thought. The faith that God gives us, that He's assigned to us according to the Word, is the God kind of faith. It's the kind of faith that believes, speaks, and manifests. Well, how do, how, do I know, how do I know it's the God kind of faith? Because God gave it to you. And that's the only kind He's got. <laughs> right? If it's the only kind of faith He's got and He said He gave you faith, it has to be that kind of faith. It has to be the kind of faith that believes, speaks, and sees it manifest. So that's been placed within you. The ability to call those things that be not as though they were. Right? And now we said that now faith is the substance of the evidence things not yet seen. Faith is the ability to call those things that be not as though they were. Right? That's been placed within you. That's good news. That's good news. So what's that mean for us? That means if you don't like your situation, get a hold of the Word and start speaking it and your situation is transformed. Mm. See, the, what we have to do is transform our situation to conform to the Word. Yeah. Yeah. What we try to do often is transform the Word to fit our situation. And that's backwards. That won't work. It might make you feel good. It might make you feel like your, your, your situation is justified. But the truth is, that's a lie. The truth is, that's a lie. That's... <laughs> <laughs> but that's right. God gave every believer a measure of faith. But what about the lost sinner? What, what, what about them? Do they have faith? Romans 10, 14-17 says this. How then shall they call on Him who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him whom they have never heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good news, of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed your report? So then faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we, when he's talking about preaching right here, he's talking about sharing the good news of the gospel. He's not just talking about what I'm doing from behind this pulpit. He's talking about you, 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 every one of you. When you're out there sharing what God's done for you, that's preaching the gospel. So he says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. So when you share the Word with someone who's lost, who has no faith, when they hear the Word, faith is manifest in their heart so that they can become saved. Without, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to be saved. You're saved by grace through what? Saved by grace through faith is what the Word says. So faith is required to be saved. That faith comes by hearing the Word. That Word comes by you sharing the good news of the Gospel with people out there. So how do I do that? How do you share the Gospel? How, what do I say to somebody who's lost? <coughs> the best thing is what Cole did right there. Share with them what God's done for you. You always have a testimony, right? They overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. 
Y'all with me? Yes. How many in here has had something that God's done for you? Has God done anything for you? Has God healed you? Has God saved you? Has God delivered you? Yes. Every one of us, at some point in our life, we can look back and say, that was God. Because there's no other explanation for it. We all have those stories, don't we? All we have to do is go out and share those stories. And you know what happens when you share those stories with someone who's lost? It inspires faith. It gives a hope. Now, they can accept what Jesus did. Now, when they accept Jesus, then God gives them a what? A measure of faith. Y'all with me? Y'all see how you see the pattern? We have to share the gospel message with them, with the unsaved, and hearing the word produces faith to be saved. Faith can't come without hearing the Word. And the Word can't be heard unless somebody shares it. The Word can't be heard unless somebody shares it. There's a world out there dying and going to hell every day. I was with a friend of mine just a couple of days ago who was broken hearted because a good friend of his had just passed away. And he said, the worst thing is, I don't think he was right with God. And I've been in that position. When you lose a friend who you don't think or you don't know or you know for sure was not right with God. And there's a feeling of, I should have done something. I should have said something. Have you ever been there? That's a feeling of, of, of total disappointment in myself that I experienced when I've gone through that. I don't ever want to be in that position again. I don't ever want to lose another friend, see a friend or a family member pass away who I didn't at least give an opportunity to, to accept what Jesus did. Because we've all been commissioned to do that. What what what? What did Jesus say for you to do, for each of us to do? Go out into the world and do what? Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. What do I say? Just say what God has done for you. Just share with them what God has done for you. Give them a hope. Then the Holy Spirit takes over. And it's out of your hands. And God just does what He does. I thank God that people share the gospel with me. When I said with my own mouth I didn't believe in God, people shared the gospel with me. And what happened? It inspired faith. It inspired faith. It's up to us. Everybody say it's up to me. It's up to me. We can pray, and that's great. We need to be praying for our lost loved ones. But all the prayer in the world doesn't change anything if we don't step out and do what God says. We can pray that people will come to the Lord, but if we don't ever open our mouth, that's what he just he said right there. How will they hear unless somebody shares with them? That's what Jesus said. It's up to us. How will they know they can be healed? If we don't tell them. If we don't tell them. There was a, a girl, a young girl yesterday. Wasn't it yesterday that that girl was going to take her life? In, uh, somewhere out west. She'd gone to one of the states that legalized euthanasia. And she had been diagnosed with a brain tumor, I think it was. So she was going out there because euthanasia was legal and she was going to have a doctor assist her in taking her own life. No hope. Why don't somebody share with her that God still heals? Why don't somebody share with her that the Bible says lay your hands on the sick and they'll recover? It says that Jesus went about doing good and healing how many that were oppressed them? He said he healed all. Now he said greater things than this you can do because I go to my Father. So if Jesus healed all, he said, greater things than this you can do. What can we do? You know, all. Some, most, <coughs> no, all. But what if it's really bad? All. But what if the doctor said it can't be done? <coughs> all. See? It's available. It's available. All we have to do is have faith. Hmm. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The truth of the word. Not a theory of the word. Truth comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing the truth of the word. The reason there's an absence of faith in so many churches is because there's more theory taught than truth. There's more theory about the word than the truth of the word. And a theory about the word doesn't produce faith. It's the teaching of the Word. The truth of the Word that produces faith. And I'm not bashing anybody because it's easy to get off on teaching theory. You know, I read books all the time of somebody's theory, their interpretation of Scripture. And a lot of it sounds good and a lot of it's right on. 
But I have to make sure, just because it tickles my ear, that doesn't mean it's right. It has to be tested by the Spirit. It has to be tested by the truth of the Word to make sure that even though this sounds good, is it right? Because if it's not right, it doesn't produce faith. And if it doesn't produce faith, it's not saving, healing, and delivering. And if it's not saving, healing, and delivering, I don't want anything to do with it. Because time is short. So our time needs to be consumed with salvation, healing, and deliverance. And not what sounds good to the ears of man. See what I'm saying? Yeah. What sounds good to the ears of man can build a big church. It can generate a lot of money. But it doesn't save the lost. It doesn't heal the sick. It doesn't deliver the captive. Amen? Amen. Growing faith. <coughs> Growing faith. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly. And the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. I mixed up, get mixed up there because it says every one of you all. And that's not right. That's supposed to say y'all. <laughs> you and all. What's that? Why is there an A there? <coughs> so faith has the ability to grow. Faith has the ability to grow. We as believers all start out with the same measure of faith. <coughs> all he said was, he was giving each of, each of us a measure of faith, right? It's the same measure. God doesn't give some a head start. We've all been given the same measure of faith at the time of our rebirth. But developing this, this faith or growing this faith is up to us. So when people say, I just need more faith, so I'm praying for more faith, we can see that that's not right. You don't pray for more faith. You grow more faith. You, God gave you a measure already. Now what do you do with it? So developing faith is up to us. God doesn't develop it. We do. Everybody say, I do. I do. I do. To develop your faith, you must do two things. Developing faith and developing your body is the same. So developing faith requires two things. First, feed the Word of God. Okay? Second, exercise it by putting it to work. Feed it and exercise it. How do you grow your body? If you want to be a bodybuilder, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to eat right, first of all, right? And you're going to exercise. And what's going to happen? If you eat right and you exercise, what's going to happen? Your body's going to start to transform. Yeah. It's going to start to grow, right? Yeah. Hello? Y'all with me? Yes. Well, what happens with your faith? What happens with your faith if you feed it right and exercise it? It's going to grow. It's going to grow. Faith food. How do I feed my faith? What do I feed my faith? Feed it faith food, right? Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus said this, and he answered, and he is Jesus, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, what is faith food? The word. the word. Faith food is the word. What food does for our body, the word does for our faith. Okay? Y'all with me on that? When you feed your spirit, you're feeding your faith. Who knows who Smith Wigglesworth was? Every time he sat down, or as he finished eating a meal, didn't matter where he was, if he was traveling, preaching, if he was in somebody's home, or if he was in a restaurant, it didn't matter. They said when he finished eating a meal, he would push back from the table, pull his New Testament out of his, because that's the only thing he could read. He couldn't read. He was illiterate, but he could read the New Testament. Nothing else. You could hand him a newspaper, and he couldn't tell you what was on it, but he could read the Word. That's a miracle. But every time he would finish eating, it didn't matter where he was, he'd push back from the table, reach in his pocket, pull out a New Testament, and start reading about faith. And it usually turned into a sermon, wherever he was, on faith. So when Smith Wigglesworth understood feeding the body is important, but also feeding the spirit. What he would say when he pushed back, he said, we have fed the body, now let us feed the spirit. So he would start reading about faith. After every meal, after every meal, 
Now, this is somebody that we should take note of. Why? Because he understood faith. How do I know? Because it's documented document that he raised over 14 people from the dead during the time of his ministry. 14 people that were dead that he raised from the dead. That's faith. He called those things that be not as though they were, and he spoke life to the dead body, and they were raised from the dead. Faith, the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He believed that God would raise that person from the dead. So he spoke it. He believed it. He spoke it. He believed it. He spoke it. He kept speaking it until it was manifest. See, sometimes we give up on the first try. What we say is, well, I guess it wasn't God's will. Well, if it was God, wasn't God's will, you should have never spoken in the first place. How are you going to have faith for something if you don't first know that it's God's will? You can't. I can't speak healing over your body if I don't know it's God's will. So I have to find the word that tells me it's God's will. And it is always God's will to heal you. Always. There's never a time when it's not God's will to heal you. Never. Don't start going through your mind and say, yeah, but what about... No. Never is it not God's will to heal. Never. Never is it God's will for you to be in poverty. Never. Ever. Never is it God's will for you to be bound by anything. He said he came to set you free. He came to give you a future and a hope. He said he desires to give you, he wants to give you the desires of the heart so your joy may be full. That doesn't sound like sickness and poverty to me. Jesus went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Well, if it was God's will, how did Jesus heal them all? Did he contradict the will of God? Absolutely not. It's always God's will. He was wounded for my transgression, bruised for our iniquities, chastised for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. Amen. We are healed. Depends on if you read Isaiah or Peter. But if we were and we are, then we is. Yes. <laughs> hmm? yes. All you got to do is grab it. <coughs> See, y'all going to get me all full of faith. <laughs> I'm going to take a trip to a funeral home. <laughs> We have to feed our faith. What was the other thing we had to do? Exercise. Exercise. That's, I don't even like using that word. That's why I let you say it. <laughs> exercise. Faith exercise. Matthew 9, 29. This is Jesus again. Then he, Jesus, touched their eyes saying, according to what? Your, Your faith. Let it be done to you. Now was Jesus saying according to my faith? No. No. Do with Jesus' faith. How much faith did Jesus have? All of it. He was full of faith. He was faithful. Even unto the cross. You better have faith when you head in that direction, when you're walking down that road. If you got a glimpse, a, 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 a glimpse of doubt, you ain't going to the cross. Right? So Jesus had all kind of faith, but he didn't say nothing about that right here when he's healing the blind. He said, according to your faith, you can come up here for healing, and I can know for sure that when I lay my hands on you, you're going to be healed. But if you don't have any faith, what's going to happen? It's not going to be manifest. Or it can actually, the healing power of God be here, touch you, you're healed, and by the time you get to the door, you're already confessing that you're sick, you're broke, you're whatever, you're bound, and even though you were healed right here, you lost it before you got right. I've seen it several times happen right here in our service. And I hear the word. I say, oh, there it went. Just lost it. Hmm? Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you eat natural food and you never exercise, what happens? We all know. <laughs> we grow not how we're supposed to. We get fat and unhealthy, right? The same thing in the spirit. You can eat and eat and eat the Word of God. You can be right here every week hearing the Word. You can be at home reading the Word. You can be in your car listening to the Word. You, everywhere you go can be Word, 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 Word. And if you never exercise, guess what happens to the Spirit? Guess what happens to your faith? It gets fat and unhealthy because it's never exercised. Man, somebody ought to grab that. 
You got to believe God for something. Anybody believe in God for something? Yes. Yes. Or are you believing God for something? Yes. All right, so what scripture are you standing on? Crickets chirping. <laughs> got to grab a scripture. Because then you know it's the will of God. When you know it's the will of God, what happens? Faith. Yeah. Then you start to speak it. Not speaking doubt, but speaking faith. And then what happens? you got the God kind of faith, and then it becomes what? Manifest. Then you start to see what you've been praying for. My little man right back there. Daddy, buy me a boat. Uh -uh. That ain't buying you a boat. You sow a seed and you believe God and you ask God for a boat. That's how it works. So guess what? He's got a boat out there that he bought, that he paid for, that God blessed him with. Why? Because he spoke it. Because he called those things that be not as though they were. And what happened? He had it. And not only did he buy a boat, he had enough left over, he bought a truck. He's 15. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It works. It works. It works. Believe and speak, and it's manifest. Remember when he had, and I've shared this with you, but I'm going to share it again. When he had warts on his feet, and he went to the doctor, and they burn them off, and they grow right back. So what do we tell him to do? Speak to them. Here's what the word says. Now speak the word. And guess what happened? They fell off. They just fell off. The doctor couldn't take care of them. But when he spoke the word of God, they fell off. I wish you could get it. Like Cole said, this works. All you got to do is grab it. All you got to do is believe it. Like Jesus said. Like what did Jesus say? According to your faith, let it be unto you. It's, your, it, it, it's up to you. He gave you the faith. Now you're going to feed it. You're going to exercise it. Yeah. <sighs> exercise your faith on the level that you're on. Exercise your faith on the level that you're on. Nobody climbs a ladder starting at the top wrong, do they? You ever seen anybody climb a ladder like that? Not me. You climb a ladder where you start at. Rung number one at the bottom, right? Or sometimes you might skip the bottom and go right to the next one if you got long enough legs. But you start at the bottom and you work your way up. You don't get saved and take that measure of faith that God gives you and head to the, to the funeral home. Because you're going to be disappointed. And what happens is when you start believing for something that's above your level of faith, what happens is you become discouraged and you want to give up. I can remember back years ago, when God started develop, or when I started developing the faith that God gave me, one thing that, that I had grown in my faith level to, for healing was hiccups. Right, Matt? Yeah. And anybody around me with hiccups, I, you want to get rid of that? <laughs> and I speak to the hiccups, and they were gone every time. And I thought that was so cool because the, the one I heard was normally the last one they hiccup. I was like, that's so cool. But that's the level I was on. I was on the hiccup level. <laughs> so I had to grow that. <clears throat> Till later, it was the cancer level. You see? But I didn't start out on the cancer level. Because it, that, at that time, it would have just been a disappointment. And, and it was. And we, we did. We, and we stepped out above our level of faith a lot of times. And it, it was a disappointment because we, we weren't there yet. You know what I mean? You have to exercise your level on the faith where you're at. Okay? And then it grows. And before long, if you exercise on the level where you are, then before long, you realize that the level has gotten higher and higher and higher. Now you see God doing things that you can't, couldn't even imagine. But often people try to believe for things that is beyond their level of faith, and it just brings discouragement. So work on the level you're on, and then... Advancement comes. Faith grows. Faith builds. You don't go to the weight room and grab a 200-pound bar, right? Mm. And start curling, right? right? Lest you rip yourself apart. You start out a little lighter, and then one day you can work up to that if you stick with it, right? But it, that's, that's logic, but that's also in the faith. That's also in faith. You don't start out... You don't start out on the top rung of the ladder. You work your way there. Amen? Amen.
Faith location. This is important. This is so important. Faith location. It's important to understand where faith is located. The God kind of faith that we're talking about, it's crucial that we know where it's located. Romans 10.10 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the what one believes? Heart. Mark 11.23 for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So real faith, the faith of God, the God kind of faith, where is it found? Where? The heart. It's the heart. It's the heart that the Spirit is talking about. It's not the, the blood pumping muscle. It's the Spirit. When the Word of God talks about the heart, they're talking about the Spirit. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. yes. The Spirit, that's your innermost being, right? That's who you really are. You are a Spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. But it's the Spirit. Okay? It's crucial that we understand that. Because often what people think about faith, they think about the head. And guess what? This right here, this brain that you all have, that we all have, it's a natural skeptic. It says, well, I can't see it. I ain't going to believe it. That's just natural. That's just the brain. But don't let that convince you that you don't have faith. Because that brain's always going to have doubt. Okay? But what we have to make sure of is that we don't let the doubt that's in the brain come out of the mouth. Because it says we can have the things that we say. Isn't that what happens? We have what we say. So if we believe with the heart, and then we speak what the heart believes, that's the, which is the word, we can have what we say. But if you start speaking what the skeptical brain says, now we speak fear, doubt, confusion, destruction, failure. That's what we start speaking. Because that's what the heart, the head believes. Speak what the heart believes. With the heart. See, you can be born again. You can be saved. You can ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. But your brain tell you, man, nothing happened to you. You're the same sucker you were yesterday. Right? Your brain can talk to you like that. But what's the truth? Truth is, old things were passed away. And behold, all things were made new according to the word. Right? Believe the heart. The head will trick you. The head will commit you. Because see, the way this head operates, it operates in what they, in the five senses. It believes what it can see, smell, Hear, feel, and taste. Anything beyond that, the head's a skeptic. Okay? That's why it's important. That's, this is why it's crucial that when you hear something of the Word that your brain wants to delete and say, oh, I'm not going to buy into that. It's crucial that you say, Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Something. Because when your mouth confirms it, now your head will start accepting it. Alright? You with me? That's just how the body works. That's just our makeup. When your mouth says something, often your head will start to believe it. That's why somebody who's a chronic liar can start to believe their own lies. You ever met anybody that actually believes their own lies? They really believe it. You probably don't. But they do. Why? Because their mouth has said it so much, their brain starts to believe it. So what you say with your mouth needs to be lining up with the Word. Because then your brain will start to believe it. Your spirit believed a long time ago. But then your brain gets on board. Okay? We're talking about the God kind of faith. Y'all with me? The kind that believes, that speaks, and that manifests. It's vital that we don't let the head talk us out of what the heart believes. So don't beat yourself up. When your brain starts to say, I don't know if that's going to work. I, we all go through that. Don't, but just don't let it come out of your mouth. All right? Everybody nod your head. Yes. 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 Guard your tongue. The Bible talks a lot about the tongue. What's the Bible call it? It's a rudder. It said the ship, no matter how big the ship is, the tongue's the smallest member, and it steers the whole ship like a rudder. It said, as, as powerful as a horse he is, if you put a bit in his mouth and you control his tongue, you control the whole animal. 
It throws us off course or it keeps us dead down the middle. Your tongue. What are you allowed to come out of your mouth? Faith the man. Faith the man. This is the last one. And everybody said? Amen. 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 <laughs> but faith the man. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Capital H. Who's that talking about? God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Who wants to please God? Well, if without faith, it's impossible. With faith, it must be what? Possible. Possible. So you want to please God? Have faith. What kind of faith? The God kind of faith. What is that? Believes, speaks, and manifests. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to Him must believe that He is. He is what? And that He is who He says He is. What He said He was. I'm the Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, the first and last, bright and morning star, light and tribe of Judah, Lamb of God, Prince of Peace, great and morning, bright and morning star. On and on and on, right? He is all those things. Hmm. He demands faith of us. He demands faith of us. God gives us a measure of faith, and then He demands that we grow it, we develop it, and we use it. He gives us His Word as faith food, and He tells us how to exercise it, but doing it is up to us. Feeding it and developing it is up to us. When we were born, He gave all of us a measure of muscle, right? Every baby that's born has muscles, don't they? Now, what we do with them, is that up to God? No, that's up to us. Is it not? We were all birthed with the same muscles, right? They're all in the same place, weren't they? But yet we all look different. Why? Because we all chose to do different things with our muscles. We developed them differently and in different places. Some of us have stronger muscles in some areas than others. I'm not going to say anything about it. F.F. <laughs> F. Bosworth. Who knows who F.F. F. Bosworth, Bosworth was? He wrote the classic book, Christ the Healer. He said, that, he said this, Most people feed their body three hot meals a day and their spirit one cold snack a week and wonder why their faith is weak. How many of us feed our bodies every day? And we make sure it's good, right? I like to eat. I like to eat good food. I don't just like to eat. I like to eat good food. I don't like to eat McDonald's. I really don't. Don't enjoy it. Sometimes it's just a necessary. But like F.F. F. Bosworth said, we, we're so attentive to what we're going to eat. Aren't we? Especially in our culture, right? Especially in the culture right here. We can't gather together without eating something. If we're going to have a meeting, what's the first thing? What are we going to eat? Doesn't matter what we're there for. We've got to eat something. <laughs> hey, it's, it's funerals, and what are we worried about? Who's bringing the food? <laughs> Is it true? <laughs> Did you hear so-and-so having a funeral Tuesday? Well, we'll bring some chicken. <laughs> right? <laughs> we, we're going to make a potato salad. We're going to cook them with gumbo. Or, or, but food... We, we, we are centered around food. You know, we've had company that comes from out of state and said, you know, where we're from, we eat to live. But y'all live to eat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's obvious. It's all over me. We gear our life around what we're going to eat. That's like our question of the day. And I'm sure most families, what are we eating? And when, when, when you got a husband... And two teenage boys who like good food, with a mama that she could take it or leave it, that creates some tension at times. Yeah. <laughs> because that's real high on most, most of our priority list, but it's not high on hers. But we are always attentive to what we're going to eat. But what about our spirit? We're always attentive about what we're going to eat for our physical body. But what about our spiritual food? How much emphasis that we put on that. Huh? You with me? You think about that throughout the day? What am I going to feed my spirit? What's my spirit going to eat? My spirit likes good food. My spirit doesn't like fast food. 
He doesn't like that one scripture on the run. That's how I used to live. My spirit lived on fast food. Well, I gotta get it. I gotta go. I've got stuff to do. Let me get one scripture before I go. And that's good. But that's not what the spirit really desires. That's spiritual fast food. Our spirit wants to sit down and enjoy a good hot meal. A hot meal. Some powerful word. Get it in there. Then that spirit starts to grow. Then we desire to exercise it because now we have spiritual energy. When I have physical energy, I want to exercise it. I want to do it. I want to move around. I want to, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I remember on the way to work, I used to buy those drink surges. I think they outlawed them because it, uh, it just, but man, I would drink one of those things. Woo! <laughs> have y'all seen the commercial with the Tasmanian devil? That's why I was just like, wow, give me something to do. But when we start to feed our spirit, right, that's how our spirit will get. That's what our faith will be like. Give me something to believe. I just want to believe in something. I just want to lay my hands on somebody. Because I want to just explode with all this spiritual energy. If I don't impart it to somebody. Here? Y'all with me? Y'all got it? Feed our faith. Exercise our faith. Speak only faith. Your situation will conform to the truth of the word. Amen. Are you with me?